it's a fantastic day for it and good good to see everybody it's great to see everybody photographing I mean, it's 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 still an icon Bewley say it's their biggest draw, so there has to be something about it. Well, it's uh, supposedly Daytona Beach, which of course doesn't fit with this one, because <laughs> this only ever ran on the salt, but uh, all of the others ran on Daytona Beach, although I'm not sure whether the Harley did. That, um, that was certainly a, a Bonville uh, thing, so but most of them, yeah, and of course that one has, uh, has not been seen in this country for many, many years. How often have we seen the Bluebird CN7 um, here at Goodwood? As far as I'm aware, this is only the second time. The first time was when uh, we had the trials in 1960, and now here. It might have been here once before, but I'm, I'm not too sure of that. What have you got lined up for your time here this weekend? Uh, nothing specifically lined up, although the chaps that are doing the acting uh, side have said, would I please spend some time here and talk to people, which of course is fine. Um, Andy Green's over there talking about Bloodhound, so I can be here talking about this. Can you sort of briefly explain what your involvement with the CN7 is? Well, uh, initially I was part of the concept team. There was. Lou, the two chief designers, Ken and Lou Norris, and myself put the whole concept together, um, then sort of drew up how it should be developed. Um, I was responsible for um, cockpit and um, air brakes at the back, um, but then um, because the two directors were so busy trying to make money for the company, they said, would I take on the coordination of the construction? So I then moved off of the design side into contacting companies and going around with Donald uh, to convince them that they ought to supply everything for nothing. I believe it's going to Holland later this year in an exchange for um, one of the top Astons that are um, from the Bond series. Um, and uh, there is a possibility, there's certainly a move, for it to go to Australia next year because it's the 50th anniversary of the double, both water and land being broken there. And they're keen to have this out there. They're prepared to fly it out and fly it back um, uh, in just over a week. So let's hope it could be done. Because I think we owe them it. Um, they paid a lot of money towards getting those records there. So, Well, um, uh, according to many, the best book on land speed record ever written, so that, that's quite a, an achievement. And yeah, I think it puts a lot of things into perspective that weren't. I mean, one of the things I find is that so often people have got things from other books and they're wrong. Um, and so trying, putting what I could into that book, which largely got it all right, I think, um, hopefully it becomes the reference for um, this car in future. Um, July 1960 um, was, I, I, I'll, you can go off camera if you like, yeah. but there. That's quite a little trophy to have.